So recently my cousin sent me a video from Bill Nye on abortion and I wanted to respond to that video and originally I wanted to download the video and go through it point by point. However, my download software isn't working properly today so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read off a couple of his points and respond to them one at a time. So during the course of this video, Bill Nye had one central argument and that makes it very easy to respond to because his central argument was very easy to refute. His central argument goes like this. Basically, when you have sperm and egg and the sperm fertilizes the egg, sometimes that fertilized egg doesn't attach to the uterine wall properly as it's supposed to. And when this doesn't happen, the, the embryo will basically pass right through the woman and you end up not having you end up not having a fully formed baby develop because, well, the fertilized egg just passed right out of her. And Bill's, Bill Nye's argument was that because we sometimes see these fertilized eggs pass right through the woman without being implanted, that makes abortion okay. Now, obviously, this is there's some huge leaps in logic here. People can die at any stage of development. They can die at any point in their lives. The fact that somebody can die naturally doesn't mean that it's okay for us to end that person's life. So what do I mean by that? People who are elderly um, will often die. Um, this is something that happens. But that doesn't mean that it's okay to go into a retirement center and have us decide to end a human being's life because this is an inconvenient person. Unfortunately, this is something that is happening in certain countries. It's also not okay to kill an unborn baby just because this person is inconvenient for us. Saying, well, hey, sometimes we have miscarriages. Sometimes at any point during, during the pregnancy cycle, a woman might lose the baby. Um, this is very sad, it happens. But that doesn't mean that it's okay for us to choose to go in and kill that baby. Um, the logic here does not follow. Now, Bill Nye argues that because you have to have a fertilized egg implant into the uterus in order for a baby to develop, in order for a baby to survive, that means that this baby is not a person yet. But this logic is absurd. There's a lot of things that have to happen during the pregnancy process in order for a baby to survive. A placenta has to develop. Um, a mother's body has to not reject the baby. There's so many things that have to happen, and there's so many things that have to not happen. So implanting into the uterine wall is one thing that has to happen in order for the baby to survive, yes. But there's also a ton of things that have to happen after, after that. So to argue that life begins when... To argue that life begins when an embryo implants into the uterine wall is quite absurd. From a scientific perspective, when you have a fertilized egg, you already have a unique genome. Yes, it might take a few moments for the DNA from the sperm to meet up with the DNA from the egg. However, once that egg is fertilized, we have a genetically unique organism, a genetically unique individual. Its DNA is different from the mother's, its DNA is different from the father's. This is a unique individual that if allowed to develop, we can say this person would have red hair, or this person would have freckles, or this person um, is going to be overweight or very skinny, or this person is going to be athletic, or this person is going to be intelligent. There's a lot of things that you could say genetically about that person already. The instructions for building a new person have are already being completed. They're already they're already there. They're just arranging themselves. Um, and I should correct myself to say they already are completed because they are just arranging themselves. You already have a unique organism. You already have a unique person. Now one thing I do want to say is that science can tell us that this is a unique person at conception, or this is a unique organism at conception. But one thing that science can't do is science can never tell us right from wrong. 
We can use science to help guide our moral decisions, but science itself can't tell you if something's right or wrong. To paraphrase C.S. Lewis, science can tell you that putting cyanide on your in your grandmother's tea will be bad for her health. But science can't tell you if that's right or wrong. Now, some of you might object and say, well, obviously you're causing harm to another person, therefore this is wrong. Not necessarily. Um, perhaps you have a grandmother who's an evil dictator. And putting cyanide on her tea actually is the most moral thing to do. There's... That's what I mean when I say... That's part of what I mean when I say that science can tell us that it'll be bad for her health. It cannot tell you if it's right or wrong. So science can help us guide our decisions. It can inform us. Uh, science can tell us that putting this particular drug in this person's body will cure them of cancer. But science can't tell you if that's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. Um, that requires something outside of science. So in summary with that primary argument from Bill Nye, the fact that we have miscarriages doesn't justify abortions. Yes, we have miscarriages. Sometimes a baby doesn't make it. Um, that doesn't mean it's okay to kill that baby. Uh, just like sometimes two-year-olds don't make it, sometimes five-year-olds don't make it, sometimes 20-year-olds don't make it. People at any stage of life could die. You might die while you're watching this video. As sad as that is to hear, as much as people not, might not like me saying that, that's reality. Um, so get right with, uh, I'd say get right with Jesus. Bill Nye goes on and criticizes pro-lifers saying, to claim you know the next step when you obviously don't. Now, I find this absurd and extremely arrogant considering considering the fact that some of the people watching this are going to be medical doctors who are pro-life. They know a lot more about the development of a human being than Bill Nye will ever know. Um, Bill Nye is not a scientist. He has no scientific qualifications. He's an engineer. So he's studied physics a little bit. He studied a little bit, um, probably studied statics, probably studied mathematics. So he has a little bit of qualifications in those areas, but no more than a typical college student. Um, a, an engineer is not a scientist, and Bill Nye certainly doesn't have qualifications in the life sciences. Um, whereas somebody like myself, I have two degrees in biotechnology. And that means basically I study DNA and I study microorganisms. Um, and I study things at the cellular level. So I've studied the life sciences, whereas Bill Nye has not. Um, so I find it very arrogant for him to look at me through the camera and say that I don't know anything about biology or I don't know anything about human development, when most likely I know quite a bit more than he does. Um, and clearly I know more about logic than he does. Now, some people might criticize me and say that I'm arrogant for saying that I know more about life sciences than Bill Nye does, but that's a fact, and it's something I've earned the right to say. I have two life sciences degrees, Bill Nye does not, and I would appreciate it if he had a little more humility in future videos um, when dealing with people whom he, with whom he disagrees. Now, I want to wrap this video up with a few more points. Uh, Bill and I talks about abstinence and talking about how abstinence doesn't work. Now, I would agree that if he means abstinence only education, I would agree with him. I think that conservatives and Christians have done a deep disservice to the next generation by being afraid to talk about sex, um, by being afraid to talk about things like birth control. And I mean actual birth control, I don't mean abortion. I don't mean killing another human being. Um, though I think that students need to be educated on the violence of abortion as well. Um, so this is an area where I will, I will agree with Bill Nye. We need to teach our kids, we need to teach our kids about sex, we need to teach our kids about birth control. Because if we're, they're curious and they want to know. They're developing into adults and they have the right to know these things. And for us to say, well we're just going to tell them don't have sex, just tell them, you know, be abstinent, they're going to get all kinds of weird ideas in their heads. They're going to want to go learn about sex from the wrong people. They really need to be learning about it from people who know what they're talking about. Um, they need to learn about it from their health teachers. Um, they need to be able to have open conversations with their parents. Now, I don't think that parents should be the only people that talk to kids about sex. I think they need health teachers. Why? Because a lot of the parents don't know what they're talking about either. A lot of the parents have uh, weird, kooky ideas in their head. Um, about sex and 
um, about medical information, and that's why we need a professional who knows how to explain the medical information to the kids. Bill Nye goes on to say that closing abortion clinics doesn't help society. I would challenge him to produce facts to back up this claim. He doesn't produce any in the video. He just makes this claim and somehow we're supposed to accept it. And that was kind of the tone of the rest of the video. Um, he talks about how people have deeply held religious beliefs and how we have our perception of unborn babies. And again, he's being quite arrogant here. Some of the people in his audience are going to be medical doctors who disagree with him. So I really, really think that he should uh, have more humility in the future. Now, Bill Nye goes on and says, my mother was a woman. And yes, Bill Nye, we, we kind of assumed your mother was a woman, or at least female, because sometimes children get pregnant, sometimes teenagers get pregnant. Um, and by children, I mean little girls. Little boys do not get pregnant. Um, men do not get pregnant, no matter what any weird social justice warrior who denies biology says. Now, this is basically playing on the assumed mantra that we always hear. A woman has the right to do whatever she wants with her own body. Rawr! Um, and if, you don't, if you don't believe in abortion, you're sexist. Um, this is kind of what this is alluding to. And I would counter with, a woman has the right to do virtually anything she wants with her own body, as long as she is not causing undue harm to another person. After all, even the most die-hard Republican will agree that if you have a toxic pregnancy or a fallopian tube implantation where it's absolutely necessary for a woman to have an abortion, otherwise she'll die, we, anybody, any conservative, any Republican, um, any conservative libertarian is going to agree with you that yes, an abortion is absolutely necessary. So, sure, you might find one guy somewhere, but for the most part, conservatives are going to agree with you, religious people are going to agree with you, Christian people are going to agree with you that at this point, an abortion is the only option. That doesn't mean that it's okay to kill people just because they're inconvenient. Now, this entire video is painfully ironic. Bill Nye played a scientist on TV 20 years ago. He's not an actual scientist. I have more qualifications as a scientist than he does. Now, I don't have my PhD yet, so I haven't earned the title of scientist, but I'm about halfway there. I have my bachelor's of science in biotechnology and molecular bioscience. So I have more qualifications as a scientist than he does. I'm a lot closer to that title. Bill Nye, however, has a degree in engineering. That means he's a smart guy. He studied some physics, studied some calculus, but he's not a scientist and he's not an authority um, in science, especially when it comes to biology. And I find this to be a painful, painful irony. I see this a lot with liberals in particular, where they will reject actual academics. Um, so they'll reject actual economists, or actual scientists, or actual doctors. You know, people who actually know what they're talking about, people who have the degrees, who have the qualifications um, to talk about these things, or talk about um, their particular field. And they'll say, well, what does he know? He's just a kook. And then they will embrace people like Bill Nye. For example, uh, Dr. John Sanford, one of the greatest geneticists on the planet, invented the gene gun, revolutionized agriculture, taught at Cornell. I mean, this is a real, this is a geneticist who is very, very highly qualified. Yet, I see evolutionists and liberals who will mock him because he's a creationist. I mean, there's, there's a problem here. You can be one of the greatest scientists on the planet, and they will still dismiss you in favor of some guy named, in favor of some guy like Bill Nye. Who, all, that's all Bill Nye is. He's some guy in front of a camera. Yes, he has a background in engineering. Um, yes, he worked for NASA. Big deal. Um, he's outside of his field. He's not a scientist. And he, that, he's entitled to his opinions. Um, but for him to denigrate actual scientists, I find that to be troubling. Um, and so my message to liberals, well, I've probably offended you. That's not necessarily a bad thing. My message is, hey, go and actu actually hear experts on things. Hear experts who disagree with you. Hear experts on all sides of things. Hear, go 
and listen to atmospheric physicists who think that global warming is a problem. Go hear atmospheric physicists who don't think it's a problem. You know, instead of having some politician get on stage and talk to you about global warming, or instead of having some pretend scientist talk to you about human development, go and hear some actual experts, especially experts with whom you may disagree. Give yourself a well-rounded view of the world. Give yourself a well-rounded opinion. Don't just go hear people who agree with you. Don't just, as the old phrase goes, uh, don't just heap up teachers to yourself to scratch your itching ears. Don't just put people in front of you to confirm your confirmation bias and confirm your preconceived notions. Anyway, this video is already way longer than I expect than I planned for it to be. So, uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it if you've made it all this way. Um, and be sure to check out the rest of my videos and check out my websites. Thank you all for your time, especially those who would normally disagree with me.